Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at Gustav Stresemann. We'll be asking the question, did Stresemann solve Germany's problems? This cartoon was produced in Germany in the 1920s, and it sums up what many people thought of Stresemann at the time. It was captioned, he looks left, he looks right, he will save me. Let's decode the picture. The angel figure is Stresemann, a guardian angel, if you will guiding the young and vulnerable Germany, shown by the child. He's helping the child along a tightrope, not too far left, not too far right, and instead staying somewhere in the centre. This is a metaphor for the politics and resisting extreme left and extreme right politics. Therefore, the plan was to move Germany from war and suffering and guide it to peace and prosperity in the future. But is this really what Stresemann did? You'll be able to make your mind up by the end. So who was Gustav Stresemann? Well, first of all, he was Chancellor during the hyperinflation and the invasion of the Ruhr between August and November 1923. He was the Foreign Minister between 1923 and 1929. And he improved relations with France, improved the German economy. And this led to a period in Germany often called the Golden Twenties. However, he died one month before Germany's next big crisis, the Wall Street crash in 1929, and we'll never know how Stresemann would have solved that, if he could have done. So did Stresemann solve Germany's problems, or just hide them and delay them? Let's get into it. So how far did Gustav Stresemann solve Germany's problems? A good way of remembering what he did is with the five R's. The first R is Rentenmark, or Reichsmark, which replaced it. This was introducing a new currency to solve the hyperinflation. The next R is reparations. Stresemann actually agreed to pay them in return for reducing the amount. The next R is Ruhr, getting the French to leave the Ruhr industrial region where they've been occupying and taking German coal and steel. The fourth R is relations, making friends with former enemy countries. And the last R is to rebuild the economy, create more work and better homes in Germany. So those five R's are Rentenmark, Reparations, Ruhr, Relations and Rebuild the Economy. We're going to take each in turn and see what Stresemann did and how much it worked. Number one, the Rentenmark and Reichsmark. The old currency, the Papiermark or Papermark, was replaced with a new temporary Rentenmark. One Rentenmark was worth 1,000 billion old marks. It was replaced again with the Reichsmark in 1924. The good things about this was that the new currency was accepted by Germans and inflation ended. Trade and business confidence began to recover and wages became useful again. The hyperinflation therefore was over. But the bad news was that the hyperinflation was never forgotten. After all, people didn't get their savings back. Number two, reparations. Stresemann promised to pay reparations, with new deals to help. The 1924 Dawes Plan gave Germany longer to pay the Allies, and the 1929 Young Plan reduced the amount that needed to be paid, from 132,000 million marks to 37,000 million marks, which was a definite improvement. There was good news with this. Reparations were now more manageable and less of a threat to the fragile German economy. But there's bad news too. This move was hated. Many Germans didn't think Germany should be paying reparations at all, so many thought that agreeing to pay them at all was, was a weak move, and it made Stresemann and Germany look weak too. Thirdly, the Ruhr. France and the other allies were reassured that reparations would be paid following the 1924 Dawes Plan. Passive resistance to the occupation of the Ruhr was ended in September of 1925. There was good news with this. The French and Belgians left the Ruhr as reparations payments restarted. After all, they'd got what they wanted. Also, workers returned to work, which helped the German economy. But there's bad news too. People, especially the extreme right, saw this as giving in to the French. It was very unpopular. And another thing that his political opponents said made Stresemann look weak. Fourthly, there's relations with other countries. The German government made efforts to restore relations with former enemies. The 1925 Locarno Pact between Britain, France, Belgium and Italy meant that these countries would not invade each other. 
This made Europe more stable. In 1926, Germany joined the League of Nations, and Stresemann got the Nobel Peace Prize for his part in making this happen. There was good news here. Germany was back on better terms with former enemies, making international and economic cooperation easier. War was less likely to erupt again. Although, spoiler alert, it eventually did, of course. But that's a long way off. There's bad news, too. Stresemann made no attempt to get back land that Germany had lost in the Treaty of Versailles. Yet again, people on the right especially saw this as weak. Number five, rebuilding the economy. In the top left, we can see a diagram which represents the Dawes Plan of 1924. The idea was that the US was able to pay money to Germany in the form of loans. This money was then paid by Germany to Britain, France and Italy, partly through economics, but also partly through reparations. Britain, France and Italy were then able to pay the US what it owed them from war debts, and so on and so forth. It was a neat idea, so let's see how it worked. Stresemann got big loans from the USA as part of the Dawes Plan. These were a big boost to German investments and businesses. The quality of life in Germany improved in the so-called Golden Twenties. And there's plenty of good news here. Loans restarted the German economy, and they were used to improve the quality of life of ordinary Germans, build new homes, and kickstart trade with Britain and other European nations. But, as we've seen, there's bad news too. Germany was now economically dependent on the USA. There was inequality, and not everyone saw improvements. Taxes also had to increase to pay for loans, which hit the middle classes pretty hard. But just because Germany is now economically dependent on the USA, there's nothing to say that that is going to cause a problem, is there? It's not as if the American economy is about to crash, is it? Well, some of you will already be aware that that is precisely what happens, and this economic reliance turns out to be a very bad thing for Germany. Let's recap the five R's with our final points. What did Stresemann do for Germany? Firstly, there's the Rentenmark or Reichsmark. Stresemann introduced a new currency that ended the hyperinflation crisis. But people didn't get their savings back and they remained mistrustful of the Weimar government. Stresemann arranged a more favourable deal with reparations. He agreed to restart the reparations payments and agreed the Dawes Plan in 1924 and the Young Plan in 1929, both of which reduced the burden of reparations on Germany. But many Germans saw this as weak, and they disagreed with the principle of paying reparations at all. He also sorted out the situation in the Ruhr. After agreeing to pay reparations and ending passive resistance, the French occupation of the Ruhr ended. But again, many Germans saw Stresemann as backing down to France, France, who was one of Germany's former enemies. He also improved relations with other countries. He also arranged for Germany to join the League of Nations in 1926 which made war left less likely. But many Germans saw this as weakness too. They didn't want to team up with former enemies. And lastly, rebuilding the economy. American loans restarted the German economy and improved the quality of life. But Germany became reliant on American money. Any problems in the USA would now be felt very hard by Germany. And that is ultimately what happened. So did Stresemann solve Germany's problems? Or did he just paper over the cracks and hide them and delay them? That's going to be up to you, and you may well encounter historical interpretations that go on either side of this. But for now, that's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been useful to you, and if it has, please drop this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. But for now, thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.